CBS presents this program in color. To tell the truth, would like you to meet a writer, the author of the Penny Pincher's book of fine food, Carolyn Hightower. I would like to introduce the man on whom I test my recipes, my husband, John Hightower. Is this John Hightower? Is this John Hightower? Or is this Carolyn Hightower's husband, John? Well, we'll soon find out as they try to fool this panel. Bert Convy, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, Kitty Carlisle, plus 100 people in our studio audience on To Tell the Truth. <laughs> this portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by the makers of Adorbean Jr. Soak away aches and pains like a warm bath. Nice, warm bath. Just great for relief of muscular aches and pains, stiffness, minor arthritic pain. And the good news is that today's Absorbing Junior actually helps soak away aches and pains like a warm bath, even better. What's more, it's medicated. So when muscles are sore, knotted, and tired, just rub Absorbing Junior with its control flow applicator into the area that hurts. It releases warmth that penetrates deep. Penetrates deep to soak away aches and pains. Warmth that penetrates deep to soak away stiffness. Penetrates deep to soak away fatigue and tension. Ah, just great. Today's Absorbing Junior for fast, long-lasting relief. Absorbing Junior helps soak away aches and pains like a warm bath. Even better, Absorbing Junior. Try it. Talk about. It's a word game new to Buzzer that everyone will be talking about. Prince Charles. Prince Charles is right. Yeah! We're going to say diamond. You're right. Yeah. Now you can talk about. Talk about. Weekdays at 8.30. Right here on Buzzer.
here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bud Collier. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good afternoon, panel. Good afternoon, Well, 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 well. Incidentally, panel, just as a little added bit of information, John Hightower, one of the three men now in our soundproof room, is executive director of the New York State Council on the Arts. That's just a little something I throw in. It's time now to question Carolyn Hightower, the young lady who wrote the book on gourmet cooking on a penny pincher's budget. And we'll start with uh, Peggy Cass. Peggy? Any ballet dancers in your family? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No. No. Uh, well, that wasn't so good, I must say. Uh, <laughs> maybe I was thinking of Maria Tall Chief. No, no, no. you're thinking of uh, oh. Hightowers. They're, they're Osage Indian, I think. Y yeah, that's fabulous dancers. Orson. You ever use Osage in your cooking? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Do you take cheap stuff and spice it up good? No. What? No. Uh, what, what's the secret to cooking well cheaply? Shopping well. Ah, good. Kitty. Uh, knowing the cuts and that sort of thing. That's right. Uh, d does your husband ever say to you, darling, no, not this? Won't yes. You? And what do you do? you cry? No, I, uh, his judgment's very good. <laughs> Bert Conby. How do you work a diet if you want, on cheap foods? Now, is that better or worse? Uh, I think it's, it's better. My husband's just lost uh, some weight. <laughs> From the cheap food, right? Yeah, you, you cut out the, what I call stuff. And uh, in, in your menu, use meat and lots of protein. Adele Davis. Anybody ever heard of her? Peggy. I don't, you know, cheap meat doesn't have as much fat as expensive meat, so it's thinning, it's more right. thinninger. Uh, yeah. What do you say to that, Mr. English Professor? More thinninger. More thinninger? I have more for it. What language is it? <laughs> Arson. Now, what's, what's your husband's favorite cheap goodie that you ever make? Uh, lamb and bacon. Lamb bound and bacon. Lamb bottom? Bound. <laughs> lamb bound and bacon. All right. right. Uh, Kitty. Where did you meet your husband? In the kitchen? Uh, no, he was dating my roommate. God, we had <laughs> always the same. Classic. <laughs> You're right. Bert. That happens here all the time, doesn't it? <laughs> always best friends. What about, uh, now, expensive food, the other side of the coin. Now, if you, if you go shopping and you want to buy some expensive food, do you have to go to different markets? Or can you do all the shopping in one place, would you say? Uh, no, I, well, if I were making a really expensive meal, sort of no holds barred, I'd go to different markets. And that's all the time we have for this preliminary questioning. Let's ask the gentleman in question to please come in from the soundproofed room. Very well, panel. See if you can find out which of these gentlemen is married to Carolyn Hightower. We'll start with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty. you, bud. Uh, we found out, number two, something about your uh, courting days. Um, and we, I'd like to know how you switched from Mrs. Hightower's roommate to her. Well, Mrs. Uh, Hightower was always around when I was visiting, and she and I simply got along better. And what happened to the roommate? She actually wound up marrying one of my best friends. Oh, everybody was happy. Uh, number three, uh, have you lost weight on this Penny Pinch's cookbook? Well, not on the cookbook as such, but I did lose about 10 pounds. Why was that? Well, partly because the uh, recipes are so well planned, I think. Oh. Uh, Bert Conby. Yes, number one, when you go to a restaurant, now, is your wife critical of the food that it's, that's served? Well, it, um, it depends on, on where it is. She's probably critical of me as much as the restaurant. She specializes in meat? Uh, oh, you say me. Me. Oh, me. yes, critical of me. Why? Why would she be critical of you? Well, it depends on the restaurant I take her to. Ah, okay. Number two, is there a pressure at your house, would you say, around dinner time? I mean, is everybody watching to see if the souffle is going to flop or what? I, I stay away from the kitchen completely. Okay, thank you. Peggy. Number three, do you know what soul food is? <laughs> no, I don't. Heavens. It's an unreligious household. Uh, no, number one. <laughs> number one, does your wife, uh, since it says the Penny Pinchers cookbook, does your wife like get specials like when alfalfa is cheap, does she buy a bale of that and dress it up with a little cube meat? I would hope it would not be alfalfa. But, <laughs> but um, specialties, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, 
How much do you, does your wife budget for food for you, for you all for, for a week? Do you know? She tries at $25. Uh, a lot of caviar on that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Arson. how many of you get fed for $25 a week? Just the two of you? Well, no, there's the baby Amanda, too. Amanda doesn't eat much, though, right? Amanda's got a pretty healthy appetite. <laughs> Number two, does your wife feed Amanda? Amanda is 20 years old, you idiot. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, does Amanda have canned baby food, or does your wife make up the... How old is Amanda? She's two. Two, all right. Well, we're... And that's all the time we have. Time for you now to mark your ballots, if you will, please, without change and without any consultation. And time for the audience in the studio to vote. Audience, when I say vote, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote! Now that registers your votes. Now let's see how our panel voted. Bert, for whom did you vote? Well, I'm sure I'm wrong, but I'm going to think positively today. It's, uh, I think it's number one because he laughed at soul food and he's involved in the arts, and I think he would, you know, yeah, no good. Terrific. Number one. <laughs> Peggy. Well, they all sound as though they went to St. Paul's school. But since St. Paul's school it specializes in the hockey, I voted for two. He looks like a hockey player. <laughs> I wanted to find out why uh, uh, his wife is critical of number one in the restaurant. Does he drink the finger bowls, perhaps? Or what? Some terrible gaff. I, however, I voted for number two. <laughs> it could have been any of the three of them. I didn't have a clue who it was. I think, it's one. I think it might be one, yeah. Kitty. I think it could be anybody, too. But I voted for number one because I think he's more involved in the arts as well. I think I based it on that. Although he doesn't look as though he's lost 10 pounds. He looks as though he's always thin. Very well, let's see who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for... Boy. Number two. <laughs> Carolyn, suppose you go over and show us which one is your husband, John. John, we gather from some of the questioning that uh, you have no weight watching problem since uh, you're a little more conscious of weight. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it, uh, the 10 pounds I did lose has been in the most elegant and enjoyable manner possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way. Well, we thank you for joining us, both of you, and wish you great success with your books. Thank you. Thank and you. great happiness with you and your one and a half children. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Jerry Alford. I'm a social worker at Henry Street Settlement, and I'm unmarried. <laughs> Thank you. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name's Anthony Lutterwood. I'm a lawyer here in New York. And checking the story, five, there were one, two, three incorrect votes. That's three times $100 for a total of $300. Thanks for being with us. Hope it was as much fun for you as it was for us. Goodbye and God bless. Now, panel, take a good look at the clothing in these scenes from Bonnie and Clyde. Oh. The dresses and suits worn by these performers were designed in the style of the 1930s, and the costume designer of this film was nominated for an Academy Award. We'll meet her right after this message. Let me show you something. Scuff marks, black ink, lipstick. In the past, you'd need a scrub brush to clean up a mess like that. But not anymore. Now we have new Fantastic Spray Cleaner from Texize. Fantastic wipes out dirt on contact, like that. Watch. Just spray Fantastic on and wipe that mess away. If Fantastic cleans up that mess so easily, imagine how easy it makes regular household cleaning. Use it to clean dirty stoves. On all kinds of woodwork. Aluminum awnings, floors, even greasy kitchen exhaust fans. Yes, Fantastic wipes out dirt on contact, like that. Fantastic spray cleaner. Thrifty refills, too.
were tickets on the envelope. That's quite important. Now, let's meet our trend-setting costume designer. What is your name, please? My name is Theodora Van Runkel. My name is Theodora Van Runkel. My name is Theodora Van Runkel. We'll find out more about Theodora Van Runkel. First, a word. Funny when you're having people over for dinner. How you think of the dinners that didn't turn out. Like the time Gladys Campbell's steak was tough. And she had the nerve to ask where you bought your meat. Or when Joe Forrester tried to cut through that roast and spilled his wine. You've learned that when the meat's tough, the meal's a flop. So now you make sure the meat's tender with Adolph's Instant Meat Tenderizer. Simple. Moisten the meat, sprinkle on Adolph's, and pierce. Then relax when Gladys Campbell picks up her knife. You know the meat's going to be tender with Adolph's. It never fails. If you're on a salt-free diet, use a salt-free salt. Adolph's salt substitute. So close it's almost cheating. All right, panel, open up your envelope, please, and follow along with me. You have one? Yeah. I, Theodora Van Runkel, am a costume designer for motion pictures. Personally, I believe that anything goes in fashion today. That the 1968 woman can wear any style or any length of dress that she wants. It could be a black mini skirt with a typical bonny blouse or a beige plaid suit with red Chesterfield collar matching the turtleneck overblouse, or a lace combing jacket with a tweed maxi length skirt. I find myself partly responsible for the return to the 1930s look in women's clothes. I designed the trend setting outfits worn in the film Bonnie and Clyde and for these designs I received an Academy Award nomination. Signed, Theodora Van Runkel. This portion of the Tell the Truth is brought to you by the makers of the Dolby Movie. The Dolby Movie contains like a warm bath. The next portion of the Tell the Truth is brought to you by Mrs. Butterworth. The syrup with rich maple flavor you can see. And these three ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Theodora Van Runkel. We we'll start the cross-examination, I believe, with Orson B. Orson. Yes, thank you. Now, number two. Uh, first of all, let me say I think it's a, Bunny and Clyde is maybe the best picture of the year, and the costumes are fantastic. Yeah, and, yeah. And my old lady, who's a dressmaker, Carolyn, is only wearing maxi-length things now because of you. Now, how do you feel when you realize you've changed the whole uh, style in the whole country? Well, I think it was necessary. I think women enjoy having a little bit more modesty and femininity. Yeah, well, I don't number three, I like miniskirts, too. I, I, I'm not used to the maxi-length things yet, but I always get brainwashed quickly. How long does it take the average male to get brainwashed? Uh, forever. Not me. Most, I... most men really prefer the mini look. Yeah, all those are slovenly guys that sit around <laughs> eating a fried egg sandwich on Saturday night watching the fights. Oh, thank you. <laughs> number one, uh, do you happen to know, you're very young, but uh, many of the clothes that you designed for Bonnie and Clyde were invented, as you know, at, at that time in the 30s. Do you know who invented that blouse that you're, who designed originally the blouse you're wearing with the open work? This is my design. Uh, number two, have you ever heard of Madame Vionnet? Yes, I have. Yeah. Um, number three, where did you get your uh, tweed skirt? I made it myself. Oh, do you live in California? Yes, I do. Uh, Bert Convey. Yes, number two, uh, the midi or the maxi length skirt now, that's coming this year. Do you like it? You say you like I think a woman could wear anything that she feels like wearing at the moment. Well, that, I didn't ask that. I said, do you like it? Yes, I do. For evening, I feel quite feminine in it. But now, number three, don't you agree? Because I think that it doesn't help a woman's leg at all. It cuts her off right yeah. in the middle of the calf, and it's just not attractive. Yes, but she can make a point of other aspects of her femininity. <laughs> well, point number three. <laughs> I don't think I heard that. Peggy! Well... I like, the, uh, number one is Minnie Mouse, and number three is Maxi Mouse, is the way it works out. <laughs> but, number two, uh, no, number one, you see that open work on your blouse, what is that called? 
Bagging. That's what I figured. So. Number three, did the 30 spa- <laughs> uh, there's a way of cutting clothes sideways. What is that called? Bias cut. Thank you. Number two, there was a certain style in the 30s of hats that kind of went over your... Well, I mean, I wasn't around much wearing hats except bonnets, I want you to know. But there were feathers coming out and it was named after a French empress. What is that called? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Who was the empress? And that's all Jane? the time we have, so mark yeah, your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change. And audience, again, when I say vote, please select number one, number two, <laughs> or number three. Are you ready? <laughs> Vote. All right. Now let's see how our panel did with the same problem. Bert, for whom did you vote? Well, in spite of my personal taste, I'm voting for the maxi length skirt. <laughs> I think it's number three. Peggy. Well, I like the look of number one, Miss Minnie Mouse, but I voted for Maxie Mouse because that's a very expensive blouse, and I think if it belonged to her, she'd only wear it herself because that blouse must be worth about a hundred bucks. Looks it. No? Two dollars. <laughs> Gee, it looks expensive. Wow. Thank you. It's yeah. from a junk store. A junk oh, well, it was originally expensive. You <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, I voted for number three as well. It could have been any of them. They're all fine, healthy girls, but three looks rich. I think she's going to Well, I voted for number two because number one said that she was the original designer of that kind of a, an open work blouse, and it was Madame Vionnet who started it, and number two seemed to know that. So anyway, well, we'll find out how our audience voted and meet the real Theodora Van Runkel right after this brief message. Mrs. Butterworth here. Watch real careful now. If syrup's thin enough to run right off, could be something's missing. Nothing's missing from Mrs. Butterworth's syrup. It's made with a blend of natural syrups, butter, and lots of good things. And that's why mine doesn't run off. It's thicker, richer. Tastes as good as it looks. Rich and mapley Mrs. Butterworth's. The one with richer flavor you can see. Carlo. Our teeth are too dull for close-ups. Dice che i denti non sono bianchi. Sono sempre stati così. Guarda, Her teeth have always been hard to whiten. Hmm? Tell her to try Pepsodent. It has a special brightener. Gets even hard to whiten teeth, they're whitest. Ma il dentifricio non serve a niente. It's my business to make people look good. Vediamo. Samuel Scott, see? Pepsodent. It's even hard to whiten teeth, they're whitest.
And let's see who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for... Number two. Okay, well, time to find out right now which of these three ladies in truth is costume designer for Bonnie and Clyde. Will the real Theodora Van Runkel please stand up? Thank you very much. Thank you. You may be seated, if you will. Uh, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Helene Taylor, and I'm the executive assistant to president of Pampel and Associates, an ad agency. Thank you. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Mary Merritt. I'm a sales representative for Macy Fowler, a furniture dealer here in New York. Thank you. Theodora, I understand you have something interesting to tell us about the blouse that uh, number one is wearing. Helena. Yes, that's the actual blouse from the film that I designed for Faye Dunaway. Beautiful. It was worn by her. It's it is beautiful. Is Kitty Thank right you. about the original lady, Madame Schmagetti? Madame Schmagetti. Yes. Yeah. Madame but you know, that blouse is beautiful that you've got on. Oh, thank well, you, Peggy. Uh, you, there was a time when people would ask me to take it all, go home and change my clothes because it's <laughs> so far out. Now it's acceptable. <laughs> we checked the scar. We find that uh, while well, there was a little smartness affecting the, the uh, panel this time, there were still two incorrect votes, one by the audience and one by a panelist. And therefore, there's a total of $200. And we do thank you very much for being with us. Thank it you. was fun for you, then it was fun for us. Thank Goodbye you. and God bless you. <laughs> We'll be back in a minute. First, listen to this word. Susie tried them all. All the ways she could think of to solve her dandruff problem. Susie, after all that, you didn't lose your dandruff, did you? Now try Rinse Away Dandruff Rinse. Rinse Away works deep down to control dandruff shampoo to shampoo. For more beautiful, shining, clean hair, try Rinse Away. You've got nothing to lose but your dandruff. If your hands are hurting, hurting bad, looking rough, you're feeling sad, hurt them? Heal them with Dermafresh. It's Dermafresh that you should use as carbamide for hands abused. Hurt them? Heal them with Dermafresh. Medicate when hands feel low. Dermafresh makes hurt and go. Hurt them? Heal them with Dermafresh. If your hands are feeling rough, not nice, take some soothe and sound advice. Hurt them? Heal them with Dermafresh.
index card. Boring, but add stars and it becomes... He put it in her cleavage. Hysterical. <laughs> Match Game, it's where all cards aspire to be. Tune in, coming up next on Buzzer. See you on Monday, panel. Have a good weekend. You have a good weekend, too. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. This portion of To Tell the Truth was brought to you by new bright white customers. To get even larger white to beat their whiter. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cosby production. And Johnny Olson speaking. This program is recorded. Get ready to match the star, Robert Morse, Brett Summers.